Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to create a vase with a 3D spirals wrapped around. You can see at the right hand corner, you can see that body. So I'll start with a sketch and then I'll you know use some shape binder to create a second sketch and then boolean operations to uh, create this uh, spiral shape and do an array to like a 36 array and then create this body that uh, that I'm going to fuse the spiral shape to the body so let's start with a sketch so we'll start with a new model uh, as always you you know you, most of the time you start with a sketch so that's what I'm going to do here so uh, I'm going to create this sketch in the XY plane and uh, so what i'm going to do here is go to the construction mode create a line a vertical line along the y-axis um, and that's just to give me a size reference so let's say give a dimension more like uh, six inches so that's the height of my was so that's why i want to kind of give like a reference dimension so next thing we'll start with a polyline and start draw a sketch of the vas that i'm going to create so uh, this is the rough sketch uh, so you you're going to start with a rough sketch and then you Put some dimensions across it so this i'm going to close this sketch uh, since we are going to create a, a body out of it so we need to, need to have a close sketch um, and, and then start playing with the constraints so horizontal constraint on top um, and then um, you know you you can adjust the height but yeah, i'm going to first give a, like a, a horizontal dimension to the center and then uh, that shows how much open you have on the vas uh, then apply parallels uh, constraints uh, so the you know wall i want a wall to be parallel uh, to each other so it, with a uniform thickness um, and so uh, as you constrain uh, you will see your degrees of freedom on your uh, on your left side uh, menu will go down so uh, as, as I am applying more and more constraints and dimensions uh, you, you have start losing, uh, seeing your uh, degrees of freedom going down so I am controlling the thickness here uh, I am using the uh, vertice and line uh, dimensional constraints okay and I have used that in the past um, so and uh, you know that's a very handy tool available for us in the uh, in the sketch so then give a height dimension as well so uh, going to uh, in here of course i'm not going to be all that bothered about exact dimensions because this is example but you get the picture right you you can give exact dimensions as you need it so keep uh, putting constraints on um, intention here is to fully constrain the uh, the sketch now um, you know you don't really need to but you know in the in this case i'm going to do it so i'm putting angle constraints um, on two locations uh, yeah the first one and the and the second one so that reduce the your degrees of freedom further down now the logic behind this constraining i have a video that kind of gives you that i'll put a link onto that video uh, why we do constraining like this uh, and you can watch it um, and then uh, i'm filleting these uh, sharp corners you know you know in a realistic uh, in the west you you will have you will have a smooth edge so I put the uh, the uh, fillet uh, filleting uh, on those edges so you can you know play back and look at it but you know you, you, it was it is pretty simple so and when I did that what happened was my 
thickness uh, constraint I applied earlier got disappeared. So that's why I'm uh, reapplying them. Now, if you have planned it properly, you know, you could have avoided that step. But anyway, hey, uh, this is not a. Uh, I'm doing it on the fly, so uh, I, I will have to redo that again, that step. So. <coughs> Uh, so uh, let's uh, so few more with few more constraints uh, I should be able to uh, fully constrain this model so uh, let's see what else I have to do here um, so uh, at the same time I'm going to uh, you know put some dimensions on the uh, vertical uh, I would say somewhat angular uh, wall uh, that will um, you know you you kind of a by with those dimensions you kind of a control how much um, <coughs> how, how long those walls going to be so now uh, there are a few more um, constraints I have to do uh, this is the equivalent constraint so since I put one only one dimension on one side I'm going to make it equivalent so that uh, that way that will get uh, you know same uh, size will apply to the other side so um, so there's couple of degrees of freedom still left to be constrained uh, I'm going to put the equivalent constraint on top as well now when I did that uh, this uh, bottom piece got out of whack but what you have to do here is apply the parallel constraint and that will uh, that should do the trick here so that's that's what I did so it's essentially <clears throat> body got fully constrained now um, and now you can uh, essentially revolve this to create the was that uh, we are looking for so I'm going to get out of the sketch and then go to the uh, part design uh, I'm going to put this sketch into a body uh, so that body uh, because if you don't you can't revolve it you need a body to create a revolve so I'm going to revolve uh, around the y-axis uh, so it's a <clears throat> 360 revolve um, as you can see uh, and then uh, um, I actually don't need 360 I'm going to reduce it to 180 okay so I'm going to go and do the 180 degree uh, sector only and uh, you will see why I'm doing that because I want to draw another sketch along the edge so in order to do that, I'm going to create a body and do the shape binder and pick that, yeah, that, uh, uh, that surface and attach that to the second sketch. That's what I did, okay? Uh, you might want to replay that a little bit, but I did it a little bit faster, but that's what I did. I attached that face uh, onto my second sketch using the shape binder. <coughs> now, Using the edge linker, I'm going to get that edge. That's the edge I, I want to, you know, start with that edge to my second sketch. Uh, so that's the intention here. So I now that edge is linked to my second sketch that I'm going to draw right now. So uh, I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> on top of that edge, uh, even though that we created that edge, uh, it's not. Uh, you, you need to create on top of it you need to have lines uh, that is uh, that is part of the the new sketch so uh, that's what I'm doing right now I'm essentially uh, drawing the uh, the uh, sketch on top of that edge okay so basically making it exactly uh, on top of it I mean if even if it is slightly off I mean you know it may not be visible into the naked eye but if it is uh, you, know, you know theoretically it could be slightly off but that doesn't matter uh, now we created that uh, now you can see when I switch off the shape binder you can see that sketch that I have drawn so 
going back to into the sketch now <coughs> I'm going to complete this sketch uh, <coughs> using a polyline and, and apply some constraint around it so let's start with the polyline again uh, the the essentially what we are doing is uh, creating another parallel uh, uh, say a set of lines that uh, mimic the what we draw already on this edge so you then you, that, that's the essentially that's the uh, you know that will give you that you know uh, the feature that I want that uh, the, uh, it will have the same uh, uniform thickness throughout the uh, you know top to bottom so um, so something is goofed up here I think that uh, tangency should not be there so I'm going to delete that that took the care of that now <clears throat> when I start um, so constraining I'm going to put the parallel constraint first uh, make sure the the second line I draw is parallel uh, to the the edge uh, of the the the, the scale the previous uh, uh, the surface we pick as the shape binder now uh, I'm going to give thickness to that uh, so they make it a little bit thinner so I don't need uh, a thicker section so here I'm going to put some uh, <coughs> 0.12 uh, somehow it didn't work so I may have to redo that again uh, let's see this time it, yeah that's time I think it works fine uh, then this third one as well uh, <clears throat> that automatically constrain but I don't want those sharp edges so I'm going to go to the uh, fillet tool and fillet that uh, so that will fillet it uh, I mean maybe I should have avoided that in the first place I should have filleted it and then put the thickness dimension so may have to redo that again a little bit but that's fine <clears throat> so uh, the, here I'm going to put some reference dimensions just to know what those values are so that I can put the uh, radial constraints on those uh, fillets exactly to the same value as what is on the reference uh, fillets so I'm going to make the exactly the same <coughs> Uh, on that side uh, just move it a little bit away so that I can s put the uh, pick the uh, the fillet and make it the same so it looks the same that way so go to another fillet reference uh, fillet dimension I would say uh, that should be uh, something goofed up uh, I think that uh, point needs to be on the line so I need to uh, go to the constraint where I point on the line constraint and apply that pick the point I pick the line and that will take care of that so now <clears throat> unfortunately I have to go back and apply that uh, the vertice and the line dimensions again and control the thickness um, I think this is the second time I made the mistake so uh, you should have learned that in the first time when we created the first sketch uh, but I created that sketch so that looks um, exactly what I want I have a uniform thickness now I am going to essentially uh, rotate uh, revolve it I'm only going to do revolve 90 degree portion of it about the uh, X Y plane. So <clears throat> now that revolve shape is in the second body. So I'm going to create another body, create another sketch. So this will be on Y Z plane, uh, and so this is the you know last sketch I'm going to do for this one. So this is. Uh, going to be we'll start with the B spline uh, because that's the spiral shape okay uh, and uh, so you, once you've got the spiral shape uh, and and then you tend to you can you know uh, you you can essentially 
project that spiral spray uh, spiral shape onto the, uh, uh, the the body we created and could get a uh, uh, like a uh, uh, extract a, uh, a slice of it uh, and that's what I'm going to do so uh, the this uh, the uh, B spline, I'm going to shape it a little bit, pick those points, control points, drag it around and, and you know, shape it as you like. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to apply any dimensions here. I'm not going to even bother to constrain it, but you can do that. Uh, I'm going to create a copy of it and drag it and then place it on a, on a approximate location where it is, you know, uniform. You create a, like a uniform thick uh, surface. So that's the uh, the second uh, uh, B spline. I'm going to move it. Uh, I'm going to eyeball this one. Uh, I mean, you can put some dimensions around it, uh, but I'm going to eyeball this and uh, position it uh, so that it will give you a, a uniform thickness. So now I need to <coughs> uh, close the uh, section this uh, sketch as well uh, once I position it uh, so let's go and create a line and close those sketches so pick two points and yeah you can close it <coughs> now you have a uh, close sketch I'm going to escape out of it and I'm going to you know there so this is the third body uh, I'm going to save it first so I don't lose anything and now I'm going to pad it so padding means just apply a uniform thickness uh, with uh, I'm going to use the option two dimensional option so that it will uh, give those uh, it will expand on both sides uh, now you have a overlapping two bodies uh, what I want is the intersection of the two bodies as my uh, you know third one so I'm going to go to part and use a boolean operation to do that so rather than union I'm going to use intersection pick the body one and body two and apply that's the boolean operation and that left the the intersected body okay and that is uh, I'm now it's in uh, in, in the uh, so you have what you call the common in the tree. You can see that common, and that's the intersected body. Okay. It's actually not a body, but it's a feature. Um, now what I'm doing is making that first body 360. When I did that, what it did was that the shape binder got kind of a screwed up. So I'm going to delete it. Now this is not going to affect the sketch. Uh, because we already passed that point so that did not affect the sketch um, so uh, when I deleted that but now I have the uh, the spiral uh, around the uh, vase now what I need to do is uh, that I dump that into a the another body and going to create multiple uh, bodies or multiple spirals going with the draft polar option so 36 uh, 36 uh, spirals around now it created by default it created on the z axis i need to go to uh, i'm going to switch off the z and go to y so now you can see those spirals are wrapped around the entire 360. So that's the array that you have. Now uh, that array, I can throw that into another body because uh, you know these are features, they are not bodies. So you need to put this into a body uh, and, and then you can um, go and do a, a uh, a boolean operation on that and un unite those uh, all the bodies together so go to the pad part and then go to uh, I'm going to go to uh, boolean and union this time I'm going to use union and then pick the body 
first body and the body fourth body so that will it will take time some time because there are a lot of features here now we created that and it is still a feature it's called fusion i'm going to create a, another body and and drag and drop that fusion into that body so that we got that uh, if the body five is the complete part so i'm going to switch off that uh, uh, raft grid this is the model you got uh, so this is the the vas so i'm uh, going to make it shaded so this looks you know this is what i intend to do so it's pretty very intricate shape vas hope you guys uh, like this video it's it's you know quite intriguing uh, when i made this so uh, hopefully you guys learn something from this and uh, you will of course um, you know if you have any comments or questions please leave uh, comments and uh, please subscribe thank you